indie games are sick. Creativity is allowed in the world of indie games. I'm not only talking about being able to parry a nuclear explosion. Indie devs have the freedom to do what they want. Any genre or game idea can be experimented with. Let's say you like bullet hells and metroidvanias and you want to see them combined. Or you want Dark Souls, but you want to put it in a different setting. Or maybe you just love Sonic and you want to see more games like it. You can find them, and sometimes in mass. Indie devs can build on the ideas of games that inspired them in the first place, or removing the idea and replacing it with something else. And that something else can be a completely new mechanic, idea, or story element. AAA studios can't always create those kind of games. To experiment in the AAA industry is taking a risk, especially for using an unproven or niche idea. And I like those niche ideas. Variety is the spice of life. I couldn't go on playing video games for as long as I did without that spice. And for me, because of indie developers, finding video games to play is easy. While I do enjoy a good Metroidvania, bullet hells are not something I go out of my way for, but I do find the Night Witch to be enjoyable, especially with that game's magic system that uses deck building. The Night Witch combines both genre I like and dislike, and became something I love. Dark Souls 2 was a great time for co-op nonsense, and dual wielding katanas, but playing the dark fantasy setting got really tiring for me, and the way co-op was set up exhausted me. Having to do the level and boss twice on both sides was something I simply wasn't a fan of. Souls like indie games got rid of this issue entirely by allowing me to complete the whole game with a friend, achievements included, all in space or in a mishmash of levels paying homage to other games. The last hero of Nostalgia and Hellpoint were so much fun. And as far as Sonic goes, 2D fan games were plentiful and 3D games, not so much. At least one that I was interested in. I wanted something original that went in a different direction for game design. Spark the Electric Jester 1 and 2 were it. The first one was a good time, having a good combination of Sonic, Kirby, and Mega Man as inspiration. But the second game is a game I can return to frequently. Spark transitioned from 2D to 3D very well. I can get my fill going as fast as I want, when I want. In Spark 3, it's complicated. I really hate the car. The game isn't terrible. It's just not for me. We're moving on. We're, we're moving on. And this is not including games like Spiritfall that scratch that itch for the gameplay like Smash. And there's so many other games that fill niches I want. AAA studios wouldn't want to alienate their audience that fell in love with their series or the type of games that they initially made. So they won't change much. Or they can water it down so the masses can join and enjoy their type of games, completely alienating their core audience. And in the worst case scenario, making a game for nobody to enjoy. Indie devs don't exactly have to do that. They can do whatever they want. And while the results may vary, they seem to have been mostly positive for me. Mostly. It truly seems like indie devs have my back even though they aren't making the games just for me. And the best part is that indie games are mad cheap. These companies will echo the same damn thing in current day. They built their games to be bigger, with a more realistic art style, more playtime, everything and more. And what do they want for all that? 70, 80, 100 dollars? I ain't got that kind of money, and I don't need all that. Honestly, I don't mind having a short game with stylized graphics. You thought I was gonna say worse graphics, huh? <laughs> yeah, right. If it means having a contained and meaningful story where I can get into a flow state in combat while having a cacophony of sounds filling my entire being. That's all I need. 
Plus, if I wanted to buy a bigger game, I could spend $40 max and still have a more fulfilling experience than most AAA bloats. I get more bang for my buck. Sticking with mostly indie titles, I'm happy knowing I spent $60 on three different games, knowing that I'll have fun with all of them, rather than buying one where I might beat it, but I got bored somewhere along the way forgetting most of it. And that's not to say I don't enjoy AAA titles either. You both die now! Bitch! I enjoyed the Tales of, Yi series, and Sonic IPs, and I dipped my toes in Monster Hunter and Devil May Cry, and I play Street Fighter 6. Those games tend to give me joy when playing them especially Street Fighter VI being the best modern fighter at the moment. And that's modern, with a capital M. I'm a gamer, and I play games. That's obvious, it's simple. But I can't help but feel that indie games that I've played give me a lot more of what I want, and consistently. I'm aware of indie developers falling for the same traps as AAA Studios, from buggy games on launch to not coming out ever, and anything in between. Developers are people and people make mistakes. Or actively screw over people, I don't know. The difference is how expensive the failures might be to one another. I love indie games. I can find what I want, when I want, and if it's not out, it's coming, and I'll be there. All I want to do is share that love with people. Look up an indie game, searching for a genre you like. You might have an interest in its trailers, reviews, fan art, memes, doesn't matter. There's a game out there for you. You just gotta go find it. Hey, thanks for watching. Remember to like, comment, and subscribe for more videos on awesome indie games.